and welcome everybody from my side for this presentation regarding the wavelength based blocking technique for ECD based on custom materials. So, today I will start with the motivation behind this work, then I will present the wavelength transform and a particular implementation of it, which is a translation environment, wavelength transform. Then I will explain that our are proposing the blocking technique briefly in one dimensional case and how can this be applied for the base context. Then I will continue with some results before we some consideration on the method and then a visual and objective comparison with other uh, processing, the blocking processing in the radio domain. And finally I will conclude with some summary and conclusion. So starting with the motivation, one may ask why use wave compositions for remote blocking artifacts? The explanation is currently quite straightforward because blocking artifacts are closed because every block is processed independently, so they are locally correlated and at the same time a different composition step is suited for different frequency. So we need at the same time spatial and frequency information. And wavelength composition exploit this because provide at the same time spatial and frequency resolution. But how does it look then for the wavelength transport? So the wavelength transform is a subband to composition. Maybe yeah, you can see here a little bit. So depending on the direction of the filtering and on the type of the filtering, so direction can be of course vertical, horizontal, and the type of the filtering can be uh, high pass or low pass. We can add up to four different compositions. So we have the with just low pass, we have the approximation coefficient, then here we can not so simple as well, but there are vertical details, horizontal details, and diagonal details. Of course, this procedure can be reiterated again using as input the previous level of estimation uh, coefficient and then another level of wave composition. So going now to the full chain of the algorithm, so we start with the compressed image, then we apply the wave transform, our blocking technique, and we can reconstruct the, the blocked image with the uh, inverse wave transform. The problem is that if between the wave transform and the wave inverse transform we apply a not linear processing, then the, uh, with the closure of centering, uh, the temporary construction is no more valid. And the proposed development technique probably is a not linear technique. So what we can do, we can uh, use the novel identities and avoid the sum sampling, and this will lead to the translation environment, which has also a nice uh, feature that can achieve better result exposing uh, the correlation between high descent pixels. Those are the position environment wavelet. This is already the first uh, level. We have here the approximation option, we have, as we can see a little better, the vertical details, horizontal details, and the angle details. We can see easily that going down to the level of wave, we can change the frequency and but the size of the subband composition remains the same. So, going now to the blocking, let's explain before in one dimensional case. So, here we have our block border, perfect block border in one dimensional case, and this is how it looks like at the first wave, transition environment wave integration. Let's concentrate for now for the high pass because we're going to apply our block injury, uh, uh, algorithm only on the high pass. So, before in the special domain we have a sheet on the luminance and now we have uh, high activity in the uh, wave domain. This is two peaks which has the same magnitude but opposite sign. So, it may be also possible a simple detector of detection of the blocks. And the idea for now will be to equalize this activity with the neighbor's contents in this way, we can have an algorithm which is content adaptive and it automatically differentiates between texture and flat regions. How can this be applied to an image? So let's consider here four blocks in the for example, an image. We have that in the wooded domain, especially in the general details of them, we have that the, the block border are expanded and usually has a higher activity than the neighbors. Then we could equalize the activity, uh, this activity uh, with the neighbors using the uh, absolute moment of the first order. So, for example, we can equalize G, I, and H using the vertical neighbor content, then equalize again E, I, and F 
using the horizontal neighbor model. So in a real image, you can see here above. You can see that this means that at the same time lock on texture area and of course in flight areas. And the idea is to differentiate that automatically without using any threshold, without using any uh, any uh, output things. So here we can see the level details, the first level of wave level details, and a 3D visualization of the uh, red square uh, area. So here we should, for example, reduce, let's stick for the moment for the uh, uh, graphical box. Here we have uh, an eye activity, you can see in this uh, area, which belongs to top borders. And we don't want to reduce this activity too much because we are in the texture level and if we reduce too much this activity, then we blur too much the image. Otherwise, here we are between texture and flat area, so we should have a, a smooth transition, so we should reduce the activity to the mean value of the, of the, of the names. In fact, we can switch back and forth just to see. Here, we have the activity is reduced to the level of texture, and whereas here we have a more general here it doesn't look like the image, and we can see here that we can reconstruct the image without uh, loss of sharpness, and but we strongly remove the dots, both in flat areas and in texture areas. So going now to the result, we first have to do some consideration on the method itself. As I already said, it automatically adapts to the content, and of course, because every uh, subband composition of the query is very independently also depends on the frequency. Then, as I already said, there is no parametric parameter in the algorithm, so for example, there is no pressure. And of course, we could use uh, more uh, different measure to calculate the activity. And for now, we just use the first order of the uh, first order of the moment because provide nice result and it is also pretty fast. Of course. Let's say that if you also use the second order moment, maybe you can achieve better results, but the trade off between computationally, uh, computational uh, effort, and result is not so it goes, it's better to go to for the first order of function moments. Moreover, it's a really fast algorithm, so we implemented in the uh, notebook uh, video card, the GeForce GT 4N25M, and it takes a little bit less than 6 milliseconds on uh, SD. So it's really suitable for real-time application. Moreover, the idea is to have a full chain of processing in the weather domain, because usually you can do uh, easy processing in that domain. And we have, for example, some reference. We can do some image announcements. And also we can apply maybe uh, uh, the ring technique to remove also the types of noise in the weather domain. So to discuss the stuff, we decided to use this for standard uh, images, and we apply to the, uh, them uh, compression using MATLAB at two different quality, at 50% and 30%. Then we decide to use the objective evaluation, the PSNR and the structure similarity index. And as you may notice, those algorithms are all uh, in weighted uh, algorithms. This is because, as I said already, we want to have a full chain of algorithms that works in weighted domain. So the first two are uh, in wavelet thresholding using normal wavelet, the first, and the uh, translation environment wavelet, the second one. And uh, the last one provide is uh, provide a global in wavelet equalization followed by a macro uh, field picking. Uh, so unfortunately, I think that for human you cannot see too much, but it's very visible on the presentation itself and also in the paper. So we have the original maze, the compressor JPEG image, and the, the blocked with the, the engraved thresholding, the, the blocked with engraved thresholding uh, with the translation variable, and the macro of the approach and the proposed method. So it's not so visible, but uh, the engraved thresholding really remove well the blocks on the flat area because using those as uh, lower activity than the threshold. Whereas a lot of uh, block borders are still visible on the texture here and here, 
because those usually uh, the TV is coming up to the texture, uh, to the texture one, and so is the, 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 the total activity size and the threshold. Whereas, if you consider the macro and the DR plots, here we cannot see any more block borders, but we tend to low bust much the texture itself. And moreover, uh, there's the failed to completely remove the block border on flat tire because of small aperture of the Whereas our methods really perform well in both the cases and it doesn't suffer of the blurring of the texture. The experimental also confirmed by the objective from PSNR. You can see that for example for quality of 50 percent we are more or less one in the higher than the other, especially if you especially in 30 percent of quality, you can see that in the band simulation we are really outperform the others, this is because the other, our argument is really especially keep an innovation on texture and the current series is really uh, full of texture and whereas if you consider the pepper series which is almost flat image we don't have such a high uh, increase. Of course if you also see, you can see the SSIM and you can see that also for SSIM for almost all the images we have better results except for being for just the best uh, image at 30% quality. But it's really slightly lower, and as I said, the pepper image is almost flat quality. So, finally to the summary and conclusion. So today I presented a transition environment wave implementation that should be used for uh, not linear processing, and that also has a nice feature to explore the correlation between Arch and Pixel. Then, I explained a novel method, the uh, locking method in the real domain, which is content adaptive and can really differentiate between texture and FRS. Then, I proposed some results from a visual and objective comparison between proposing method and other methods in the real domain. And as a future improvement, because the method is already suitable for real time, it would be nice to have a wavelet, uh, to have a, uh, in, uh, to use also the wavelet from which to identify the block border position. So to have really uh, to be able to block also video content. As I type. And also a uh, similar approach of the real equalization can be used also to remove green marginals around edges. So, thanks for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you very much. Okay, are there any questions? Yes. Um, I have a question to, uh, about the results. Um, yeah. For the picture of peppers. Why does your approach does not uh, on, a, on the next slide yeah. not perform best. What, what's the reason? Um, you said it's a <coughs> so, picture uh, of uh, flat areas. Yeah. So currently uh, uh, the macro and the approach works really well because uh, the unit has a global uh, wave equalization which is easy to do and uh, it works better because this global is quite efficient because the, uh, the image is almost flat. And uh, I think it's performed better than uh, the proposed algorithm because due to the macro and the approach, you can filter also around the edges. They perform a bit better than the edges. But I mean, uh, the difference is really you cannot see the same. The real image. Okay, uh, is there another question? Please. Uh, is the D block mix limited to eight up state block size or is it uh, also for invariant block size? So, currently, uh, this implementation is uh, going on eight by eight block size. And the E, of course, is to adapt to the video content, so it also depends on which video we have. So, then to adapt also to the size. You just said uh, to video, but uh, the files on single pictures. Yeah. Do you plan to 
Does have a temporal component in, in future for, for video? For now, for uh, our test, uh, because the, the, the blocking was really uh, adaptive, is really almost performance of such a uh, temporal. Because let's say, let's say that depending on the compression itself, we really adapt to the content directly. So if uh, the, uh, that frame, the video is really more uh, less compressive, then uh, the blocking argument really go deep and really the block flex regions. But in the other case that, that the other frame is not so highly compressed, then it doesn't blur too much. So a temporal of course you have a lot of gains, but as, I think that temporal you have a lot of gain if you consider bringing artifacts or other type of artifacts. Especially to have, let's say, a little bit of uh, stability because of the quantization itself. But not for the developing. Okay, I just have uh, maybe a final question. No, seems not to be the case. Okay, then, thank you again.